What if one company could connect every piece of data about you, where you live, what you buy, even what you believe, and then sell that power to governments, armies, and corporations? That company exists. It's called Palantir. And you know, this isn't just about Washington or Silicon Valley. I started my own social media agency in Zurich in 2018. Today, Palantir has offices here too, right alongside Google, Nvidia, Apple, OpenAI and many others. So the future of AI and data isn't that far away for me. It's actually right here. What does Palantir actually do? Why is it everywhere? And is it really that good or just hype and politics? Palantir was founded in 2003 by Peter Thiel and Alex Karp. The timing was no accident. After 9-11, governments were desperate for ways to track terrorists. The CIA even gave Palantir early funding. And the name comes from Lord of the Rings. The Palantir were seeing stones. They let you spy across time and space. Powerful, but dangerous. And then there's Alex Karp. Unlike most tech CEOs, he didn't study computer science, no MBA, he studied philosophy, then earned a law degree at Stanford. Later, he got a PhD in social theory in Germany. So his thesis was literally called aggression in the life world. He never planned to be a businessman, he wanted to be a social theorist. And that vibe, philosophical, contrarian, shaped Palantir's identity. And from the start, Palantir called itself the company built for bad times. Crisis weren't obstacles, they were business models. But what does Palantir actually build? There are four main platforms. The first one is called Gotham. It builds in-house for defense and intelligence, a data detective kit for spies and soldiers. The second one is called Foundry, also Palantir built the operating system for corporations. It cleans and connects messy data. The third one is called Apollo, another Palantir original, a deployment engine. It keeps Gotham and Foundry running, even on secure or classified networks. And then comes the fourth one. It's called AIP, the Artificial Intelligence Platform. And here's the twist. Palantir didn't build its own AI brain. Instead, AIP integrates external models, OpenAI's ChatGPT, Anthropic's Claude, Google's Gemini, and Meta's Llama. Palantir's value isn't the AI itself, it's the guardrails, the governance, and the ability to run those models on sensitive data. So Gotham, Foundry, and Apollo, Palantir's own creations, AIP, more of a wrapper for other people's AI. Palantir shows up in very different places. On the battlefields, in Afghanistan, it helped US troops track roadside bomb patterns. In Ukraine today, its AI analyzes drone and satellite feeds to select targets. In Israel, reports link its tools to target selection in Gaza. At the same time, civilian casualties hit alarming highs. Carp admitted, our product is used on occasion to kill people. In healthcare, during COVID, Palantir ran vaccine logistics for the US and the UK. But when the NHS later gave them a huge contract to manage patient records, doctors and privacy groups protested. Do we really want a spy tech company in charge of health data? In business, Airbus uses it's to track airplane production, BP to run digital twins of oil fields. And yes, even Wendy's is using Palantir to optimize burger supply chains. So does Palantir's tech actually work? Yes, but not magically. Its strength is integration, connecting messy, incompatible systems into one clear view. That's valuable for bureaucracies drowning in information, but it's also expensive. It's complex and often needs Palantir engineers embedded on the side. So analysts have even called it a services company masquerading as a software company. So why is Palantir everywhere? Connections. Peter Thiel's influence, especially during Trump's presidency, gave Palantir direct access to contracts. And timing, 9-11, COVID, Ukraine, exactly the bad times Palantir was built for. So is it hype or substance? It's actually both. 
Substance, because Palantir delivered real results in counterterrorism, healthcare, and military targeting. Hype because its branding makes it sound like an all-seeing oracle. But the truth is Palantir works, but its dominance owes as much to politics and branding as to technical brilliance. And you know, Palantir doesn't sell cheap subscriptions, it sells big contracts, tens of millions, and embeds its engineers with the client. For years, it wasn't profitable. That changed in 2023, and by 2024 and 2025, Palantir became one of the hottest stocks in the S&P 500. Some investors even whisper about a trillion dollar future, but its model is still very hands-on. You know, can it really scale like Microsoft? Or is it just a boutique firm with a giant valuation? And of course, of course there are controversies. Surveillance. Police in the US used Palantir for predictive policing and critics say it automated racial bias. ICE used it to track immigrants, planning raids that split families. And then there's the kill chain. Palantir speeds up military targeting, but blurs the line between human judgment and algorithmic suggestion. So who's responsible when AI points at the wrong target? There's healthcare trust. Palantir's NHS contract sparked outrage. People don't want their health records tied to a company known for spy work. And even if the data is safe, the trust is gone. And Palantir's defense? We provide tools and governments decide how to use them. PARP frames it as a moral duty. Better for democracies to have this tech than authoritarian regimes like China. And here's my takeaway. Palantir isn't just about big data or AI. It's about who controls reality itself. The more decisions in war, healthcare or taxes that run through Palantir software, the more our lives are shaped by code written in Denver, Palo Alto or even Zurich. And that hits close to home. So when I walk to my agency's office in Zurich, I pass the logos of Palantir, NVIDIA, Google, OpenAI. And while I build campaigns for brands, these giants are building the infrastructure of the future. Systems that decide who gets a mortgage, who gets treatment, even who lives or dies on a battlefield. And Palantir calls itself a company built for bad times. But whether it makes the world safer or just more controlled depends on how we regulate it, challenge it and hold it accountable. Because if we don't, the most powerful decisions may no longer be made in parliaments or boardrooms, but in code. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.